So the, the, the first thing I wanted to do is, is uh, before I talk about the video and why I showed it, uh, some old school. You know, that, that video is probably, uh, almost every person in here has probably seen that video. Um, but what the people that have been with me for the last 10 years seen is, is Eric Thomas's family driving my Bentleys and Maseratis around the parking lot. And, and us bringing him here constantly, developing a friendship to where he picked me up from airports and I picked him up from airports when he was charging 2,500 bucks to come speak, driving from Detroit. And now he's 50 Gs, you know, I think to come speak and the voiceover at the NBA games and baseball games. And, and uh, but before I get into to the old school video, that was like the one video that started to get him going, you know, is, is I told everybody, I said, I'm gonna find a charity that we could donate to this week because I knew we were gonna have a big week for Independence Day. And so, ain't nothing wrong, you know, in my experience, you know, and, and I'm not, I don't have all the answers, I don't think I'm right all the time, but in my humble opinion, the, the, what I've learned with, with developing a relationship with the Lord is this silent voice of saying, when you get about my business, I'll get about your business. As long as you keep getting about my business, I'll keep getting about your business. If you could handle the money that we keep blessing your people with, then I'll just keep blessing you with more people. And, 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 and the more that, the, the more people that live by that, the more I think you're gonna see success in your own life, which will, which will give us all more success. And the less you live by that, I think the less success you're gonna have. You know, when you start to show that you can't handle the money that you've been given, you can't be a good steward with what you've been given, you make four grand and you act a fool, don't wonder why you don't get to 10. When you get to 10, you start acting a fool, you forget the people that were around you, you start cheating on your spouse and start going to the strip club and doing crazy stuff, don't wonder why you, go to, you don't get to go to 20 and you go back down to 1500, because you need it humbled. And those that humble themselves will be exalted, and those that exalt themselves will be humble. And so that's the that's the balance of being a, a warrior in this business and out of the business is you gotta you gotta walk humble, but you gotta have enough confidence and enough of an ego that you're ready to attack and ready to win and you don't back down from people. And but 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 your ego has to be below your humility. And so the minute you stop understanding that you owe you know, people that ain't getting enough, they don't give enough. Anytime somebody's ever started talking sauce on us in business, I always tell them, pull your pants down, let me see how much money you've given away over the last 12 months when you wanna knock about the money and all this other stuff. We could go percentage of income, we could go total dollar, whatever you want. Because most people don't like to give. It's hard for people to give. It's easy to talk about giving and what you want this world to be. And, and the easiest way to, to make this world a better place is to clean up your own little bit of mess that you got right in front of yourself. And none of us walk uh, in a perfect house. All of us are, are living in a glass house and, and, and should avoid judging and throwing stones at people. But what I've learned is the more you give, the more you get. And so I said, I didn't know where we were gonna donate and I went to the doctor and I was sitting down with the doctor and I was talking to him about why he came to Pittsburgh, not from Pittsburgh, and he said that he was in the military for a while. And one of the things that drove him here is they had a, a, a big base uh, for this charity. It's, all, it's about the Warrior Foundation that uh, is in the tri-state area. And I said, there we go, there's my answer. That's what I was waiting for. I said, I think it was Thursday or Friday. I said, I'll be donating on, on Monday. He couldn't believe it, jaw drop. I said, I was waiting for this. Uh, on Monday we're going to contribute. So what, what I'm going to do is, is on an agency-wide basis, anybody that contributes, I'm going to match you dollar for dollar up to 2,000. And if we, I mean, if we don't raise that, you're going to get it. But if, if, if we, we should, if we don't, then I'm going to donate 1,000 myself. But I'd like us to get in, you know, 2,000 from the agency, 2,000 from me, we'll do 4,000 as a donation, as a one-time thing for this group. Um, especially coming off of Independence Day. and that, uh, What came up to us uh, last night about 12 o'clock in the morning, I was just writing down some things for our team and all that stuff. 
uh, something that uh, Simon uh, was on the group. Uh, some of you guys got it, who's on the grind team. Uh, and, and one of the quotes was from Tim Grover, uh, something that I said to, to Simon earlier this morning. And the reason why I got Ashley up here is, is so important. I'm gonna get to that real quick. But what I wanted to say is from his quote, uh, if you haven't read his book from Relentless, a lot of us have read that book, right? Okay, but it says, a professional doesn't let other, others down because of personal issues. If you had a, a bad day and you can't show up the next day ready to go or can't show up at all, that doesn't affect just you, it affects everyone around you. Excellence is a habit. You cannot turn it on and turn it off. I got her up here for a reason. A lot of you guys know she walked in and she was, uh, you know, she, she was a, 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 a agent, okay? But from day one, from a lot of the people who are, not, who are in here on our team, because I give it up to all the team members, I told her first thing when I actually first came. She's been a, she's been a friend from Pitt since back in 07, 06, okay? I gave the vision, she saw the vision, now she's a part of the vision. Part of that is, is that number one, she believed in the vision, okay? Now she's in an assistant role, and the reason I say that is because if I can go to work and she can go to work and I have my problems, but yet she is a, a single mother, has a five-year-old beautiful daughter, okay, and does all of the things that our team asks her to do, why can I get up and go to work? Why can't I grind just as hard as she grinds? She don't complain, she don't ask questions, she does her job, and I ain't talking about just do her job, she goes 100 miles an hour for our team. So I brought her up here, number one, just because I want to make sure that you're seen and everybody understands who you are to our team and to our agency, and I just want to say thank you. Got some more fire, I'll save it for another week. What I wanted to go over today, guys, is I wanted to go over the difference between average achievers and top performers. So today we got to hear from some top performers, people that consistently, I look at Tommy, I look at who's been on stage, who God knows how many times. I look at Jason Bratton, who's been on stage a bunch of times, number one MGA in the company, and you see these people consistently getting their names called. What's the difference between the people that you see consistently getting their names called and the people that might get called once and you never hear from them again? So what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the difference between average achievers and top performers. Why do I think this is important? Because we've been grinding this month. We've been grinding, working Sundays, Tristan out there working on Sundays, people closing on Sundays, seven days a week, 80 to 100 hours a week. People get tired, so let me read you this quote. Achievers fight long and hard to succeed, propelling themselves forward by grit and hustle. And then, then at some point, they plateau. They lose passion or they burn out. To outside observers, they may appear steady and calm as they plot ahead, but deep inside achievers often feel that they are thrashing about, lost in a sea of priorities and opportunities. They've come far in life, yet still have no standard operating principles of sustaining success. Even though they're capable, many live in constant fear that they will fall behind or catastrophically fail to handle the demands of the next level of success. Why the fear and the hardship? Why do some people break free from this reality keep rising higher and enjoy the vibrant well-being and abundant long-term success that so many envy but never reach. And I read this quote in this book and I didn't even read any more of the book because I thought of another quote. You know guys, you're gonna hear the same shit here over and 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 over again. You're gonna go to an agency meeting three months from now and you're gonna hear the same stuff that we talked about today. Why? Because the principles of success do not change. If you ever get involved in martial arts and get more involved in jujitsu, uh, jujitsu today I've been watching and studying video 50 years ago, it's pretty much the same game it is right now today. Yeah, little techniques have changed, but the fundamentals have stayed the same. The fundamentals of success stay the same throughout time. What's the first thing you le learn in, block or in, in football? Block and tackle, right? How to test. Does that change over time? No, hasn't changed. Short little things regarding form and things like that have changed, but the principles stay the same. So I looked up this other quote by Aristotle. Excellence is an art won by training and habituation. 
We do not act rightly because we have virtue or excellence, but rather we have those because we have acted rightly. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. Excellence is not an act, but a habit. A one-time achiever is exactly what it sounds like they achieve one time. A high-performance player, on the other hand, succeed beyond standard norms consistently and over the long term. Why are these people able to succeed consistently and over the long term? It's because of their habits. What you do daily, and this is something I got from Andy Frisella, and I think Simon was the first person I heard this from. I made a Facebook post on this the other day, and Tommy even just said it. Like I said, the principles don't change. How you do one thing is how you do everything.